a question that often shows up when I help CEOs, founders, and business owners build a strategic narrative is how do we clarify our idea? Maybe it's a set of ideas. It's a question that was for me uh, for the for, for the longest time kind of a, a mystery. I, I wasn't quite sure if there was a recipe. I was even looking for people who could help me do it, who I thought they, were, they would be experts in this and scientists. And I was happy to try to work with people who would promise that they would magically clarify my ideas for me until I realized that clarifying your ideas is not something you can delegate. You have to do it yourself. You, you, you can be helped by someone for sure that will help you with commitment, with consistency, with a with the with with the frequency of clarifying your ideas, but it's really a process of articulation. You clarify an idea because you articulated, you articulated, and you articulated over and over and over, and so many times that you ultimately end up eliminating all unnecessary details you get a chance to also hone on the key facets of this idea. See, when I, when I say this, I'm thinking about a piece of jewelry, a stone that you find is, that is kind of raw and you use different tools and different um, ways and methods to, to polish it and send it and shape it and, and, and look at it again and be aware of it and, and make it really uh, the way you want it to be. And so your ideas, uh, for your ideas, uh, it, it's the same. It's basically essentially the same process. How much time does this, does this process take? Well, it depends. Uh, it depends if you're used to it. And it depends also on the, it depends on the mindset that you uh, bring into this process. And the first thing that you should do is really go at this with uh, the attitude of, really, you know, the, the, the candid, the, the, the explorer, the curious explorer, you should think about this process as an experimentation. Is there any guarantee that your idea will be clear at a certain date? No one knows. It's really up to you. The second aspect of your mindset should be to let go of perfectionism. It, it can't be something that uh, you do because you want your idea to be very clear right away and you're in a rush and you want to hit a certain standard there is a little bit of a of an artistic kind of uh, alchemy to this process uh, but one is one thing is for sure is that frequency plays a big role so instead of thinking of clarifying your idea as a goal think about it as a process is a is something that you do over and over, like I said. And the, the more you do it, so the frequency is, is really something important. For instance, I care uh, hugely about you know, the clarity of the idea that I, that I share with you uh, here. And I do this every day. I publish uh, every day. And I, I, now I started to post videos every day. I talk to people about uh, my ideas every day and I help other people clarify their ideas every day. So this is something that I do, I do on a constant basis because that's my profession. But you should consider uh, the frequency at which you clarify your ideas. You may realize that you have more opportunities than you think to do it. It could be through an email. It could be through a video or an audio recording. It could be going on a podcast. There are many, many podcasts these days, and it's rather doable to, uh, to be invited as a, uh, as a guest uh, to explain something that is important to you, that matters, that may be new or, or, or unknown, that people misunderstood. And so these are chances for you to continue to clarify and hone your ideas. You heard me say the word publish. I publish every day. And this is a good transition to another aspect of idea clarification, which is it happens if you do it in public. And I'll say that again, if it happens if you do it in public, publicly. What do I mean by this? Many people tell me, well, I clarify my ideas every day. I take a notebook, you know, I write on my laptop, on my phone, and I, I write a lot. But there is really nothing like doing this and posting it and publishing it. 
you need to put yourself in a position where you're forced, you're forced to think about who is going to be the recipient, who is going to be the listener, who's going to be the audience for your idea. It puts just enough pressure that you will care about the choices that you make when you explain your idea. And also it gives you a chance to potentially uh, get feedback. You'll receive comments, you'll receive quick notes uh, on my email list. Uh, you know, most of the time or once, you know, a few times a week, I get little comments from, from my readers saying, hey, I love this. I have a question about that. I'd like to hear more. These are as many possibilities that the world out there is giving you to go at your idea again and try to clarify it. Some companies will create forums where people are invited. And in fact, sometimes they will require that you come present your ideas and that you also do that uh, in writing because writing forces you to think about each word. Also, if you write, you probably have a, a constraint for how long the document is going to be. People don't have a lot of time. Attention is scarce. And if you uh, write a long document that will take a long time for people to, to read, chances are it's going to be hard to clarify. Whereas if you are forced or if you force yourself or, or if, you, if you make this commitment that you're going to explain an idea in a page or less, this really forces you to get to the point to get to the most essential part that you may develop and expand and, and you know once you are in front of people the outcomes of idea clarifications are huge and sometimes long term many people think that they want clarity of thought you know because they have something in that they want immediately but sometimes the clarification process takes them even beyond what they thought Recently, one of uh, the uh, business leaders that I work with sent me an email. She ran into somebody that listened to a presentation that she gave five years ago. And she, she recently ran into that person. And that person told her, I still remember that presentation. I still remember what you told us at that time. It was so clear, so compelling. You did it with such vulnerability. And it was so inspiring that I still remember what what you told us, those words, the, the, the feeling, the, the, the moment. And that inspired me to uh, do something about what you are sharing with us. Idea clarification takes time, takes effort, takes courage, takes discipline, takes creativity. You can do this through speaking, writing, blogging, podcasting, even drawing too. I've been drawing for many years now, also professionally and helping other people to, to clarify their ideas uh, through this process. And it's something that brings huge rewards. So I really want to encourage you to consider this as an essential part for building your strategic narrative. If you're in business, it should be one of your core systems. It should be one of your core process, something that you, you shaped. As you probably understood now through this video is that there is not a one size fit all process. It's something that you have to, something that you have to customize. You have to come up with your own way to do it. I've, I've done it. I've, I've came up with my own system and I have multiple tools. So, but through this video, I hope, um, you know, this, motivates you to consider this it's hugely beneficial it, it changes careers it changes the trajectory of entire organizations it provides opportunity for for people to really think about things differently and act and really mobilize other groups it's an essential but it's a very misunderstand misunderstood process so Hopefully this video sheds some light on this process. And if you have questions, if you need help with that process, if you think that this is what you need now because your, the success of your, of your organization or of your business depends on it, if you felt like you don't have a compelling message or a, a strategic narrative that is not mobilizing people, well, uh, contact me or, or ask for somebody's help. 
Um, I'm Guillaume Viat. I am the, the founder and principal of MetaHelm, and that's, uh, that's sometimes and very much what we do here uh, when we help CEOs, founders, and business owners build a strategic narrative. Good luck, and I hope uh, you enjoy this process and you find it fun.